What is Kiss's best ballad? The hardest part is determining exactly what counts as a Kiss ballad. First of all, I'm not including the solo albums. The world doesn't need to think about the relative value of When You Wish Upon a Star versus Don't You Let Me Down. This seemed like the most appropriate definition of ballad. So, with that in mind, I took out these songs which are sentimental, but a bit too up-tempo. I'm also leaving out these songs which are slower, but a bit too heavy or not really romantic or sentimental. And also this song, which is just too damn goofy. That left 15 proper ballads. Let's rank all 15. All kiss rank. Random kiss stuff. Vaguely put in order. Last place goes to, Nothing Can Keep Me From You. From the soundtrack to, Detroit Rock City. This song was written by Diane Warren who had a huge hit with Aerosmith's, I Don't Want To Miss A Thing. And Kiss is clearly trying to duplicate that success. You can barely call this song Kiss. Although Bruce Kulick plays bass, Paul is the only active band member who appears on the song and it wasn't written by anyone in Kiss. This should have been performed by Celine Dion, not the Demons of Rock. At number 14 is, I Finally Found My Way. In a previous video I joked that this song would appear last on any list for which it qualified. Turns out I was wrong. It's second to last. I know some people like this song. And to be fair the verses are kind of soulful. But the rest of the song is just so schmaltzy. It sounds like a coffee commercial jingle. At number 13 is, Odyssey. I think the main reason people think of the Elder as so weird is because of this bizarre Tony Powers cover. Lyrically, it doesn't fit the rest of the story at all. I think Kiss literally said, Oh, here's a song called, Odyssey. That sounds mythological. We should put that on the Elder. Paul has called his singing on this tragic. I wouldn't go that far, but it's not his finest moment. I kinda like it, but, We Are One, just feels weird as a Kiss song. Gene says he imagined it like the Coke commercial, with all the races singing together. That's a nice sentiment, but I'm not sure this fits on a Kiss album. It contributes to the disjointed feel of Psycho Circus. This seems like it would have been better suited for one of Gene's eclectic solo projects. At number 11 is, Just a Boy. Unlike many other songs on, The Elder, this actually feels like it belongs to a rock opera. It sets up the rest of the story really well. Musically, it's very pretty, although Paul's falsetto is a bit much at times. At number 10 is, I Will Be There. This might be the most musically interesting song on this list. It was written on a dulcimer-like instrument that Paul was given as a gift. That and the addition of the tabla drums gives this song a cool Middle Eastern feel. Lyrically, it's a lovely song about the bond between Paul and his son. My only nitpick about this song is that I'm not sure the heartfelt lyrics really mesh with the somewhat eerie feeling of the song. Gene ballads are interesting, because this guy is singing a genuine, sentimental song. A World Without Heroes is well written, and I love Gene's singing. But I find it a little boring. Although the dynamics change a bit on the chorus, the feel of the song never really changes throughout. It doesn't really move me. Reason to Live is Kiss at the peak of the gloopy, glammed out, kinda cheesy period. Or so we thought. This song is definitely a bit of a knockoff of Foreigners, I Wanna Know What Love Is. The keyboards and production haven't aged too well. But if you take this song for what it is, a soaring 80s power ballad, then it's great. Shandy is another example of Not Enough Kiss. Paul is the only Kiss member to appear on this song. It's a great pop ballad and if you're a Kiss fan from Down Under, you might rank this one higher than this. Paul says that he thinks the unmasked version is too polished and he prefers the original demo. I agree. At number 6 is Beth. This song saved Destroyer and possibly Kiss. This is pretty much a Bob Ezrin song. 
Bob dramatically reshaped Peter and Stan Pendridge's original song, Beck, which was a simple little tune making fun of an ex-bandmate's complaining girlfriend. The result ended up plush, beautiful, and a big part of history. In the number 5 spot is, I Still Love You. Every other song on this list would sound ridiculous on Creatures of the Night. But this is the perfect ballad for that album. It's brooding and dark, but also epic in the true sense of the word. And you could argue this song is Paul's finest vocal performance in Kiss. He clearly relished performing the song in the 80s. Forever, is the quintessential Kiss power ballad. Another beautiful song that saved a Kiss album just in time. Kiss was possibly not even going to tour for, Hot in the Shade, until this song became a huge hit, reaching number 8. It's Bruce on bass again. I think the video gives a subtle little nod to the fact that Gene didn't play on this song by having him be the only one with a music stand in front of him. Before we get to the top 3, let's take a quick break to let you smash that subscribe button. As we do, did you know that the woman from the Reason to Live video was Playboy's April 1988 centerfold and is now married to a billionaire? After starring in, Weekend at Bernie's, Eloise Brody married the founder of Patron Tequila, who is now worth 3 billion. She can afford to blow up as many Porsches as she likes. The right song at the wrong time. That's what Paul said about, every time I look at you, and he's exactly right. The record company didn't put too much behind this song because the other three singles didn't do spectacularly well amid the changing musical climate. If this song had been released just a few years earlier, I think people would have ate it up. This is Kiss's most sonically beautiful song. Go and Blind, is undoubtedly the prettiest song ever written about a love affair with a 77-year age difference. For demonstrative purposes, here's what a 63-year-old age gap looks like. This song is many KISS fans' favorite deep cut. Gene's lyrics are mysterious and he sings the song so well. But what really makes it is the melodious bass throughout the song. It's awesome. The best KISS ballad is, Hard Luck Woman, from, Rock and Roll Over. When you take a song written by Paul and give it to Peter to sing, you get magic. Well, usually you do. This song was originally intended for Rod Stewart. Thankfully Rod rejected it, leaving it for Peter to absolutely crush it. Peter's at his best when he's allowed to just let loose, and that's exactly what he does here. The entire last minute is just him riffing and it's great. It's a beautiful, heartfelt song that's also fun at the same time. That's it. Let me know if you disagree in the comments below. And thanks for watching.